I got a question for you. What the hell happened to April Fools? In the Middle Ages, it was an excuse for some weird little gremlin guy to wear an outfit like this and run around pulling pranks on people. That was a good time. We could all get behind that. But somehow, in the past few hundred years, it has shifted to the modern day jesters, corporate marketers, who use April 1st every year to release some kind of asinine joke <laughs> in hopes of getting social media likes. And I don't want to sound too above it. I've actually written a couple of these <laughs> myself. I've done some corporate April Fools, uh, including one where I acted in it. Oh my god! I've got a question. How did the four biggest Rage converter activated. Great work, team. This has been a stimulating confrontation. Wow. Amazing. That being said, you know, that got a million and a half views. People seem to like it. What I'm trying to say is that this year particularly was bad. I looked around and I did not see a lot of great April Fools this year. And I think the most emblematic company of that for me was Reddit. You see, Reddit did our place a few years ago and people loved it. It was a really cool April Fool's idea. Everyone in the world could post a single pixel and update it every, I don't know, few minutes. And so you got these communities forming to build this collective collaborative artwork across the globe. It was it was cool. You felt like you were something bigger than yourself. We even had a little Atriox section that, uh, that I was kind of proud of. I saw my community fighting to get those pixels in every day. Now this year, they needed something good because earlier, you know, about a month ago, uh, Reddit went public, which means their stock is now for sale in public markets. The CEO has been on the news courting the Wall Street bets types, talking about how he's, you know, a user and he, he thinks you guys should love the stock. Now, Wall Street bets says this shit's going to plummet. <laughs> and I can't wait to see it. Uh, and that's probably because even though the CEO and the CFO and all the executives have been pumping the stock in public, they've been selling it in private, basically dumping it on regular people. And so they needed a good April Fool's joke to get community sentiment back. What we got was our counter. Press or don't, I don't care. It's just a big red button that if you press it, the counter goes up by one. Not that interesting. Certainly not a global collaborative event. The response was immediately, this is the worst event yet, that's it? <laughs> 23 hours into it, by the end of April 1st, the counter was at 14,201. That's embarrassing. That is an incredibly low engagement rate for a company as big as Reddit, with as much traffic as they have. The number one post on our place, back when we used to do that, was like a picture of the daily artwork. Thousands of upvotes, people in the comments loving it. The number one post on our counter, two days after it went live, this is just depressing at this point with 50 upvotes. What the hell happened? Google used to be the king of corporate April Fool's jokes. 20 years ago, they launched Gmail with one gig of storage. Everyone thought it was a joke and it turns out it was real. They just launched it on April 1st, blew everybody's mind and uh, revolutionized email. They took over the whole industry. Now they have 1.8 billion accounts. This year, they didn't do anything. Well, it's funny. It was funny. As I was looking at Google's April Fool's jokes, I noticed that in 2009, they did an April Fool's joke about forcing AI into every part of their service. You know, Google Docs having AI and Gmail having AI and all of that. It was like a joke. And nowadays, that's just every press release they put out. That's <laughs> so I guess the joke has just become their entire company. Discord did an April Fool's joke as well. You've probably heard about this. They did a video about the Discord loot boxes that went omega viral because because some kind of technical glitch had it running in the back end of everyone's Discord. So it hit 1.4 billion views in 24 hours, breaking every YouTube record. It was a cute little idea. You know, it's a nod to gamers. They tweeted out, oops, and then fixed it. And it went from 1.4 billion back down to 3.2 million. And one of the greatest view follow-ups of all time. But, but there's more to this story. Discord's little loot box stunt was kind of cloud cover for another announcement they did that was not an April Fool's joke at all. And that was ads are coming to Discord. People in the comments of that thought it was a joke. It's not. And while everyone's talking about the big view count mix up, they're quietly rolling out, you know, some ads and some bloat. The thing is, Discord, if you don't know, doesn't make money. Turns out not many of you are buying the $16 omens cowl to put on your Discord profile picture. And so they have to make money some other way. And they're trying these things called player quests. In the bottom left of your Discord, you're gonna start seeing these pop-ups to play a certain game to your friends. They wanna turn everybody into like a, a single person peer-to-peer -peer influencer. You know, if I play the finals to my friends for 15 minutes, maybe they'll join me and play it. And then the finals is happy. They're happy to pay Discord money. That's the idea anyway. My guess, as I talked about on the Clips channel, 
is that people are just gonna cheat this system. They're gonna stream to an alt account on their phone or to a bot. You could say it sounds like a theory, except when I posted that video, people in the comments were saying, yes, I'm doing exactly that. And I think eventually the companies that are paying Discord are gonna figure out they're not getting their money's worth and Discord's gonna be back at square one again. And maybe you have to do things like real invasive pop-up ads or Here's my dark theory. These fake loot boxes they put out for April Fools, they were kind of popular. They got used a hundred million times and that's not fake botted. Somebody at Discord is looking at that and going, hey, what if we did this for real? <laughs> I mean, the economy is getting gamblingified everywhere we look. I don't know if Discord's a place that's gonna avoid it. This April Fools turns out to be kind of dystopian for me. And maybe we'll have to move on to the next chat media platform. Tesla. Now I'm not the biggest fan of Elon Musk's humor, but uh, they've had some decent ones in the past. They did a mini Model S, they did Tesla Kila, but much like someone who buys a giant bottle of Tesla tequila, the stock this year has been getting hammered. It's the second worst performing stock in the S&P 500 and the shine has clearly fallen off some of Tesla and Elon Musk's brand. Cybertruck launch was pretty disastrous, rushed out and malfunctioning at an astounding rate. And uh, a report by Caliber Research showed that like generally there's a small but growing class of people who are put off by his behavior and or politics and are looking to buy a different EV, basically any alternative to Tesla. Luckily, this year's April Fools, Elon Musk had a chance to win them all back with his joke about becoming chief DEI officer of Disney. I can't wait to work with Bob Iger and Kathleen Kennedy to make their content more woke, even the Linguini. <laughs> Masterful gambit, sir. You've truly saved your brand. <laughs> Come on, you can't do better than that. You can't, uh, uh, a more woke Disney joke? That's your April Fools? Rocket Money had an insane April Fools ad. I mean, literally unbelievable. They said you could go to rocketmoney.com slash Atrioc and literally download the app for free, link your bank accounts, and then see everything you're subscribed to and cancel it with one click. What? <laughs> April Fools used to be believable, sir. Okay, nobody's gonna buy that you go to rocketmoney.com slash Atrioc. It will literally support my channel. I love working with Rocket Money. They're one of my longest running sponsors. They like Marketing Monday. They've helped me hire a researcher. Uh, I used the app even before they sponsored me and it is literally a great way to easily find and save money. Like what? No shot, no shot, dude. Could you go to rocketmoney.com slash Atrioc? It will save you probably an average of $720 a year across 5 million people that have tried. It's actually really useful and I'm using it to budget and plan for an upcoming trip to China. Get your finances in order with rocketmoney.com slash Atrioc. Come on, dude, April Fool's enough already. Thank you for sponsoring. <laughs> Tinder's April Fool's joke was kind of clever. They said they were gonna add a VP of ghosting job that was gonna help put a stop to ghosting on their platform. Again, as an April Fool's joke, fine, but a little annoying if you're a user because ghosting sucks and has become so prevalent in modern dating, largely because of apps like Tinder. You know, it's kind of like uh, Exxon Mobil doing an oil spill April Fool's joke. It's like, <laughs> it's relevant to you, but we don't like it. Overall, I think pretty negative. Blue Sky, the Twitter competitor, made fun of the fact that every tech platform is introducing shorts lately by introducing literal shorts that you can wear. This one's kind of funny, but nobody uses Blue Skies. <laughs> so I'm probably the only one that even saw this. And then we get to the food April Fool's jokes and the uniting theme of all of these was gross. Okay, 7-Eleven put out a hot dog sparkling water. Nobody wants to think about that, especially not me. Hot dog sparkling water, very gross. Pringles and Olipop weren't to be outdone though. They put out a sour cream and onion soda. I mean, I get it. April Fool's, but <laughs> it's like Kraft Mac and Cheese put out Fruity Pebbles Fruity Flavor Mac and Cheese, which given the way the American diet and Gen Alpha's brain is trending is probably going to be real. Welch's Fruit Snacks did like a Juicy Fools lip gloss, fruit snack flavored lip gloss. Okay. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts changed their name to Donuts. Following in the great tradition of IHOP being IHOB, I don't know what to say about that. I guess what was weird about it is they did it through an Instagram notes app post with like depression style lingo. Please don't ask any other questions, just going through it right now. Signed, Donuts. 
Are we? I thought we were done with this type of social media talk from brands. But I guess not because Subway responded, if you're donuts, we're cookie. And somehow got 4,000 people to like that. That all being said, some of the April Fools this year were unironically good. I know, it's crazy, but some of them did a good job. Starting with a company that has been on a bit of a marketing hot streak, Duolingo. They did a skit called Duolingo on Ice, which was ostensibly a four hour, no intermissions musical about either learning languages or dying. <laughs> playing into their whole owl will kill you if you don't study thing. They had songs called Spanish or Vanish or French or Trench. And then at one point in the show, a kid gets kidnapped during the presentation. The mom can't find him. You know, it's funny. <laughs> it's, I mean, I think the bar is pretty low, but they did something that would be good in previous years and it knocked it out of the park this year. So uh, pretty impressed. Cyberpunk, CD Projekt Red had a pretty good one where they re-released the game on 97,619 floppy disks with a render of all of them in piles. You know, it's a good nod to old school gamers. I liked it. I appreciated it. Dole, the banana company, released a sleeping bag shaped like a banana that looks actually pretty comfy and kind of dope. And unironically, I hope this is a Gmail thing where they actually release it because I will buy one. Dole, I will buy one. People in chat might buy one. Sell the sleeping bags. God... Sorry. Scotch Tape released a Scotch whiskey. I guess it's tape flavored. Top comment was, will it stick or go down smooth? That was pretty funny. Pokemon Sleep did a championship tournament, which is actually a pretty funny nod to making everything esports. Or it was like a competitive esports trailer of people actually competitively sleeping that, you know, if it were real, I'd <laughs> I don't want to watch and react to. It was a clever idea. Oreo, I usually think kind of sucks at these. They, they just take every swing. The, every single social media holiday, Oreo will have something for it. And most most of them suck. I thought their April Fools this year was all right. They released just the wafer and just the cream editions, which were like just believable enough to confuse some people in the comments, which is hard on April 1st, but also stupid enough that it's a joke. I liked it. As someone who actually detests the cream inside, sorry. Happy April Fools. I got godded. I wish this was real. Just the wafer? Mm. And then there were the April Fool's jokes that weren't so much bad as they were weird. Minecraft put out one of the biggest updates they've done in years for a potato world. They added all sorts of unique gadgets, like a literal grappling hook that people have been requesting forever into this one-off, one-day April Fool's update. You know, it was cool. If they had normal good updates, this wouldn't be a problem. But why did they spend all the effort on this? People in the comments were kind of furious. <laughs> why would we be getting these little trickle updates for every couple months when you do this huge big one for one day on April Fools. It was odd. Release the grappling hook for regular gamers, Minecraft. Velveeta put out like cheese colored hair dye that was able to dye your hair to look more like Velveeta. Sonic had a queso slush, which should probably be back in the bad. It's just disgusting. And then finally, to top it all off, the real piece de resistance of this year's April Fools, Krispy Kreme put out a you bring it, we glaze it campaign on social media in 2024. <laughs> Whatever you bring, they will glaze. The comments were as gross as you'd expect. And that's basically it, folks. That was April Fools in 2024. I think this is one of the worst years that I've seen from corporations. And I beg corporate America, I beg the world, step it up for 25. We're in some dark times. If corporations are gonna run the world, they better make us laugh at least once a year. So I join you in asking for a little bit better, a little bit funnier, or, just make better products. <laughs> Check it out. Thanks for watching Marketing Monday.